Hi, we're going to talk about the effect of acute stress on your brain, stress on your brain. So what does stress do? The acute stress response evolved to respond to a physical dangerous situation, okay? And that usually should be an on and off thing. But in real life, quite often it's more of a psychological situation. It could be all kinds of things. It could be uncertainty, fear, worry, relationships, um, danger, whatever. Anyways, stress increases three main hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol. The one that has the biggest effect on the brain for our purposes is going to be cortisol. A little bit of stress can be a good thing, so-called eustress, all right? On cell, you did a lot of work with this many years ago, last century. And a little bit of stress is like Socratic questioning. It increases your attention. It can increase your performance because you're, you're with it. You're in the game. You're paying attention. But too much stress is a distraction, and it lowers performance. This is called the yerkes dachshund curve of stress. Mild stress, we talked about it, increases tension, use stress. Excessive stress is distracting and it lowers performance. And the additional problem with excessive stress is it impairs sleep. How does the body per perceive lack of sleep? As stress. It increases these hormones when you don't sleep enough. What does a typical person do when they didn't get enough sleep and they're a little tired? They start drinking, you know, coffee or tea or some other caffeinated beverage, soda pop. And, you know, certainly you want to be more awake if you're driving, okay? But other than that, you just make things worse because when you increase these hormones, these are the catecholamines, that's the fast onset for stress. Uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenaline is the same thing as epinephrine, noradrenaline is the same thing as norepinephrine. Those are your catecholamines, increase your heart rate. Um, they also make it hard for you to sleep. So you'll tend to make the problem worse. Some people smoke a cigarette when they're stressed. Brilliant, okay, you do the same thing. You increase the same hormones. And so now you're putting a much higher amount of cortisol on your hippocampus, your memory center. It also involves the PFC, prefrontal cortex substantia nigra, okay? And especially the hippocampus, though, is our main focus here. And excessive amount of cortisol will decrease our ability to remember something. All right? And so chronic psychological stress in high amounts damages your ability to remember. And initially it's reversible, but if it is a prolonged thing over, you know, months and years, it can become partly irreversible. You can get hippocampal atrophy from it. Um, what else do people do that's uh, stupid and dangerous? They eat a lot of high-fat meals. When you eat a high-fat meal, it's been shown you lower the partial pressure of oxygen in your arterial blood by 15 to 20 percent. So you're putting an increased oxygen demand on your stressed out hippocampus and you're simultaneously lowering your delivery of oxygen to it. Not good, okay? Another thing people do that makes it worse, they'll ingest some type of excitotoxin like aspartame sweetener or MSG, monosodium glutamate. Monosodium glutamate, we talked about in another lecture, Quite often you'll see it in food stuff as barley malt extract, barley extract, malt extract. Watch out for natural flavors too. Who knows what that is? Whenever you see natural flavors, don't buy it. That just means it's something bad. They're not going to tell you what it is. All right, so anyways, what am I saying? These excitotoxins, they function in the effect, let's say, like glutamate. It activates the MDAR receptor, NMDA receptor for the memory center in the hippocampus. That increases calcium flux into the cell. It ends up causing an increased metabolic demand upon the cell. So you see what I'm saying here is the problem. If you're simultaneously increasing the metabolic demands of your memory center to the hippocampus, but decreasing your oxygen supply to it, you then are going to potentially injure it from excitotoxin. It burns out, okay? That's not something you want to do to your memory center, one of the most precious parts of your whole brain, is increase metabolic demands but decrease oxygen supply. Uh, what else? People eat a lot of salt on their junk food. Uric acid is increased in the blood whenever you have a sweetened beverage from the fructose. Um, and those are both uh, vasoconstrictors. So you're further going to narrow the arteries that go to the hippocampus and you're going to drop the blood supply. So this is a person who does this on a daily basis, and a lot of people do. They're sleep deprived, they drink a lot of caffeine, some of them smoke cigarettes, they eat junk food, they're simultaneously ramping up their metabolic demands of their hippocampus, dropping the blood supply, dropping the nutrient supply, and that's why it becomes impaired over time. There's a lot of cognitively impaired people. It's rather shocking. Okay, so anyways, excessive stress, bad for your brain. How do you reverse it? Eat good food, get your sleep. We'll talk about that in other lectures. There's a whole lecture on that. So anyways, that's it for stress effect on the brain.